Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop, call sign G4NSJ. I had a chat the other day, he said to me, what do you want to do Morse code for? What, what do I want to do Morse code for? He said, that went out in the 60s, didn't it? Went out? What's he talking about? I think it was 1997 that um, the Coast Guards, you know, ships stopped using Morse. Was it 97? That's not so long ago. I don't think military use it anymore, army and the rest of it. I don't think they're into it, unless they use it secretly. They tap out messages on the key secretly, I don't know. But um, he said, oh, you don't that, that's old hat, no one does that anymore. You tune around on the HF amateur bands, right, the bottom end of each band, the CW section, full of Morse code, absolutely full of it. I, I, I'm getting back into Morse. I, it's been a long time. I've had a few contacts recently, but up until the last what, couple of weeks, I hadn't had a CW contact on the air for 35 years. Can you believe it? So I'm getting back into it. Why? People say, why? What do you want to do that for? One reason is on top band at 80 meters, they're my favorite bands. The noise level is up here. It's like nine, you know, S9 plus 20. Okay, uh, last night actually on 80 meters wasn't too bad. It was only S8 of noise, buzzing and oh, dreadful. With Morse code, right, you could turn your filter on, narrow the filter down, headphones, you can hear that. Through all this noise, you can hear CW and you can have CW contacts on the key. They are, that went out in the 60s. Yeah. So yes, it's good fun, Morse code. And um, it's still very much alive and kicking. Now imagine when Morse code first came, Samuel Morse developed this code. They didn't actually use his code. I think they changed it, but anyway, the telegraph system, right? Not telephones, telegraph wires around the place. This is before television, before radio, before telephone, right? And certainly before mobiles <laughs> and computers. Imagine when the telegraph system was set up. I'm here in Worthing on the south coast of the UK. Something happens in London. I don't know what's happened. Oh, something, you know, someone blown something up or whatever they've done. Right, I don't know what's happened. How am I going to hear the news of what's happened in London? Uh, newspapers, yes, but someone's got to physically bring the papers down to Worthing and distribute them. Um, of course, the railway obviously did bring a lot of the country, a lot of countries together, you know, it linked linked all the towns and that so they could start trading and stuff. You know, you, you make something in, in Wales, you're knitting jumpers from woolly sheep and you sell them locally. Railway comes along, takes your stuff all over the UK. So suddenly, you know, you've got a, an industry set up rather than just a, a little cottage thing where you're selling to the locals. But Morse code Okay, what that did on the telegraph system, something happened in London, so the chap in the telegraph office there gets on his key, da, 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 sends a message down to the Worthing telegraph office, something's just happened, you know, someone's just blown up Parliament or whatever, again. <laughs> and we know within seconds, well not within seconds, but the news is down here in Worthing, you know, and uh, imagine how that must have been, what a, a fantastic thing that must have been. Something happens in Scotland and down in Devon, they hear about it the same day. You know, they've got to wait days for newspapers and all that. And then, of course, when um, Marconi started his radio experiments, actually transmitting Morse code without the telegraph wires, wireless, that must have been even more fantastic, sending Morse and receiving Morse from a ship out of the Atlantic on the Morse key. That, that must have been... Yeah, the, those pioneering days must have been absolutely wonderful. Um, that's why I like Morse code. I'd like to keep it going. You know, a lot of other people would you know, want to keep it going. It's not, oh, I bother with that. You know, we've got data modes now. We've got digital modes and SSB. You know, yeah, of course we have, and it's great, and people use all that. But we don't want to forget Morse code. The old CW contacts on the radio, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It must have been, because also, think about this. I mean, the railway did it a lot as well, but you think about the time differences. You get someone in uh, down in Cornwall, Land's End, and someone in Dover, other end of the country, okay? Where are we? Land's End's that way, Dover's that way. <laughs> okay, 
he might have his clock set at, I don't know, nine o'clock. He's got his set at 10 o'clock. Or no, it'd be the other way around. When it, yeah, because he gets the sun first. So yeah, he's, he says, oh, look, it's 9 a.m. And he's saying, oh, it's 8 a.m. Is that right? Or whichever way around it is. So there was no sort of standard time because you couldn't tell people the time. You do your GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. So in Greenwich, you know what the time is. Well, how do they know down in Wales? <laughs> or up in Hull? and Grimsby and all these other places and Dover. So of course I Morse code on the telegraph and later the the radio I suppose you could send out the time. You say right the time in Greenwich is exactly midday now. Actually it's 10 to 1 but not to worry. Then other people could receive that. They say right it's midday now. Set the town hall clock or whatever it was they had. So there's all these things that, that Morse code did in the, in the early days you know. But I'll tell you what else Morse code was used for. Look at this, the Marconi Review, number 64, belonged to Mr. Wells. Anyway, 1930-something. Here we are, February 1937. Police wireless. Right, the ever-increasing facilities, blah, 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 blah. Uh, wireless communication. Now, where's the bit I want to read to you? They used Morse code in the police cars. Right? The wave band at present allotted to police forces in this country, that's the UK, is 2.115 to 2.03 megs. Two megs! <laughs> they use Morse code. Um, oh, and in America, oh, they were using 30 to 42 megs. Um, at, at the present time, the continuous wave telegraphy is used in the majority of established police force radio systems. So can you imagine local cop car, you know, well they didn't do that, they had a bell didn't they? And there's a bloke, the passenger, he's sending out Morse code. Yep, suspect in sight. <laughs> I don't know. And telegrams. Imagine, tele you've, got, you've got Aunt Gladys living up in wherever, north of England, you're near Scotland, you're down here. And uh, you've got to tell Aunt Gladys something urgently. Alright, you write her a letter. Send a telegram, go to your telegraph office, you say, Tell Gladys to hurry up and kick the bucket. I need her the inheritance. So the bloke in the office, he sends this the Morse code up to the Scottish office up there, and some post office chap goes round to Aunt Gladys, bangs on the door. He says, "Look, you've got to kick the bucket. The woman down there needs your money." <laughs> so that's that. Look, this has just arrived in the post. It's for joining two two-inch masts together. I won't worry with that now. I'm going to sort that out later. So that's for my, one of my aerial things that I'm doing at the weekend. So yeah, telegrams, you know, you could actually give someone a message. Uh, get a message, so I had to pay for it of course, but you could get a message to someone hundreds of miles away in, I suppose, what, within an hour? By the time they got the message at the other end, then the chap goes out on his bicycle and delivers the telegram, which was like on a postcard, wasn't it? Absolutely brilliant. I think some people are frightened of Morse code. That's why they say, oh, no, that's rubbish. I'm not doing that. They're frightened of it. They think it's impossible to learn. It's surprisingly easy, to be honest, to learn. Uh, there are some people that can't do it, and they never will. You know, there are some people, they, they go for their driving test. They fail. They go for the test again. They take the test for the 12th time, and they fail. Some people just can't drive a car. I don't know why. It's like being tone deaf. Some people just aren't musical. Some people can't do Morse. But I mean, the majority of us can. It just takes a little bit of time and effort. It's not difficult. Uh, and the rewards, you know, when you've, well, I mean, these days you get you get your full license anyway, but in the old days, the reward was, you know, I was with my G8 license, I was stuck on VHF on two meters. As soon as I got the G4, the class A, because I passed the Morse test, whoa, whole HF bands opened up to me, you know. Go on what my mate used to call your short waves. <laughs> Go on your short waves. <laughs> he was funny. Uh, and what I did, unlike a lot of people, they, they get on HF and that's it, forget the more, so I hate that. <laughs> they didn't like it, they just got through the exam. But if you give it a chance, like I did, I carried on with the Morse. Um, and I had great fun with it, it really was good. So you yeah, don't be frightened of it. It's, it's, it's easy to learn, it is easy to learn. You know, just plod on with it. Just do, I don't know, 
15 minutes a day that's all you need to do at first is start learning your letters and you'll get there of course in the old days I suppose also the incentive was listening outside the amateur bands there was a lot of Morse code going on now who's that what's all this what's all this Morse going on um, some of it was the army the military I remember listening to uh, maneuvers on Salisbury Plain the soldiers in tanks and stuff they were on AM but uh, there are also Morse code contacts going on, you know, and I started to learn to read it you know, for when I was passed my exam. So I'm writing down the Morse code, you know, that these these people, these soldiers were sending. Um, ships between what two and three megs, well, kind of what one point six and three three point something megs up to there. Um, the trawler band, all the ships and the coast guard stations. There was night and radio local to me on the Isle of Wight. The Morse was pretty fast, but you could, you know, you could get some of it. You, know, you could get the, the call sign, um, GNF, where I took my exam. Uh, that was their call sign, North Foreland. Uh, you know, it was just great fun. I loved it. Um, Beacon, Shoreham Airport, send out Morse. I think they still do today. They send out Morse code of their Beacon. Uh, they send out SHM. Did it? Did it? Did it? Da da. SHM. Uh, they still do that today. And beacons, 10 metre beacons, well, repeaters on 2 metres and 70 cms. The ident is in Morse code. So, yeah, this bloke, you know, went out in the 60s. Huh. Anyway, I just thought I'd have a little rant about how good Morse code actually was and still is. Uh, a friend of mine was a radio officer and uh, he told me that he was on uh, passenger ships. He said it was dreadful. You've got to receive Morse, okay, you've got your headphones on, you're receiving Morse from wherever, the Coast Guard station, and it was the daily papers. They were sending the daily papers in Morse for the passengers. So he said you had to touch type. You're receiving, you're touch typing, and you're typing out the daily papers for the passengers to read, because you couldn't get the papers out to the middle of the Atlantic or wherever. There's some, what's that, some dog fight going on? <laughs> Um, so yeah, he said that was laborious. You know, sitting there for ages, typing out, typing out this this fast walk. I think I'm under attack. <laughs> I was under attack the other day from the seagulls, so I won't go into that. I don't know what I did to upset them, but I got plastered. So yeah, Morse code. It's, there's not much around now, but there certainly is on the amateur band. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm not saying go out and learn Morse code. Well, you wouldn't go out anyway, would you? Go in and learn it. <laughs> So there we go. look at my little oscilloscope, that's nice isn't it, a little flat screen oscilloscope, don't use that much. This huge thing up here, don't use that much either. I mean it is nice to have a scope you know when you need it doing these old radios. So there we are. I think also there's something, I mean obviously it's, it's nostalgic isn't it, Norse, Morse code, um, but there's something about it, there's some, I don't know, what would you call it, amateurs that use Morse, people look at them and say, oh, he does Morse code. Ooh. <laughs> so there is that side of it as well. Happy days. There we are. Is there anything else? Oh, nothing else to say about Morse, is there? I don't think. No. Give it a go anyway. Have a listen round and find some slow Morse stations on, uh, say, 80 metres. Or uh, download one of these apps I did on my iPad. It's, it's, it's not bad. You know, I, I just did that to brush up on my Morse. And, uh, you know, they're not bad, some of these apps. Anyway, have a listen. Give it a go. Never know, I'm, we might have a CW contact on 80 metres one day. Or if the other side of the world on 10 metres. 10 metres is good for CW because you haven't got the interference. And you can work stations the other side of the world. Great stuff. Well, yeah, I know you can on SSB as well. And FM, of course, on 10. There we are. Get your headphones on. Listen to some Morse. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.